Today, we're helping you debunking the data market. With our guests, we're going to see how noise is created on the data market, how we can navigate it, and how concealed information can be found. Stay tuned. So what we decided to do is really, as you rightly mentioned, debunking, using the word debunking, is really to remove the noise and get only relevant information. Relevant information for whom? Relevant information for the citizen in order to regain trust on social media, but also and especially for investors. Currently, financial advisors, financial traders, but also crypto traders, they are very keen on knowing what's hot topic mm -hmm. before a buzz, before some news is getting viral. What happened last year? The GameStop issue. The hedge fund, they lost $21 billion because 8 million of Reddit retail investors decided to buy and hold. So you try to provide some kind of added value services in this debunking of data? That's correct. And uh, so you, you mentioned already a little bit the fact that uh, uh, the noise, we, we you dis you discussed uh, you know, the, the business of data. What is your take with regard to the crypto market and with regard to this noise? Is there a lot of noise out there? How do you value actually uh, an information in this crypto market? The noise exists everywhere. The noise are being created artificially, but also organically. What we try to identify, I mean, try to identify because there's a lot of, lots of like massive noisy information which are irrelevant and useless, is really to identify sources of information that have been promoted by bots, by machine, and distinguish the ones that are being promoted organically. And the ones that are being promoted organically, either they are so good that they've been simulating bots or vice versa, or really there's a person behind the account that is giving a comment, that is giving sustainable information, that is giving relevant project information, use cases, even a white paper. But for sure, young people or less young people that are traders, they are keen on identifying the information. Do they have the time to read the white paper, to read the news? to find out, well, has it been promoted by Gabriel? Has it been promoted by Anthony? Has it been promoted by machines? They will not do that. And especially the high-frequency high traders. They are really on the spot. They don't want to miss the opportunity. They, they are like FOMOs. They have like the tendency of uh, behaving like FOMOs. They want to make sure that they don't miss out. And so that's why they will never take care of like uh, going under. And the reason why, because I come from investigation background as a cybersecurity, mm -hmm. uh, I've been actually working for the last 20 years for big four companies, and doing the investigation is extremely relevant because you perform your due diligence from the beginning to the end. But nobody does it on social media. And that, so that's why we want to provide added value of getting relevant information mm -hmm. that are key, that are trustful, and that make a sense for like strategy investors. Basically, the idea is to get to 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 get to to uh, some kind of a tool Correct. to to create a strategy. And there's like a tons of questions co coming up. So uh, as we mentioned already, you use AI to actually come up with the, you know the what's the relevant information. Of course, you have your own recipe. So I believe you have your criteria, etc. Um, can can you tell us a little bit of uh, you know the, what is the right information? How do you create value uh, for a trader or for someone who is willing to actually better understand what's happening in the market? Uh, how do you remove some noise? Uh, you, you spoke about the fact that uh, you, there is also a criteria on who is posting and what is, is it, is it po it's posted. Uh, what, would you, uh, what would you say is the relevant criteria and how can you create value? based on you know, uh, the, the, all the information that is out there for someone willing to create a strategy? Sure, definitely. How, how does it concretely come up? Okay, know? thank you. The, it's very important to distinguish between like, financial fundamentals, uh, like all the candlesticks that people are looking at whenever they, uh, they decide on a strategy, and then what's on the alternative data sources. Because in the alternative data sources such as social media, they are like text, images, videos, and audios. It's totally unstructured. The data being unstructured, it's hard to get a value before identifying it. 
Uh, so you really like, uh, need tangible information. Mm-hmm. Compared to the fundamentals, the fundamentals, uh, sure, they are like, like uh, the, the, uh, the candlestick, the volume, the prices, the evolution, algorithm, that already makes sense and there are a lot of providers. So what we decided to tackle the information is that what's out there in terms of data out of the noise, which gives, for example, trade ideas, mm-hmm. there's a new project, There's a new crypto that is coming up. Is there a preferred channel or is there like, uh, if I use Discord, am I discredited because I use some kind of a ancient gaming platform compared to, I don't know, maybe a more, I don't want to use the word serious, but for Twitter, for example, but you know, it's much more recognized that everyone has a CEO tweeting on Twitter. So that's a, that, that, yeah. <laughs> no, but that's, a, you're, you're perfectly right. I mean, Discord is one among others. What is in important nowadays is to consider the massive amount of all the different relevant social media. What so, is the main one for uh, what you do? So the main one right now is still Twitter, yeah. but Reddit, Telegram. We are currently embedding Discord. We will cover up to 12 different social media by the end of the year. And we analyzed uh, about half a billion of posts on a daily basis covering 80 different languages. Uh, because if you are only depending on one, it's hard to estimate and it's maybe biased. You all know the cognitive bias. So that's why whenever you are only dedicating on one, there are two risks. One, because it's totally focused. And the second, if one day Twitter decides to stop providing information, to stop, to stop emitting or to cut down the excess, then companies who are only based on analyzing Twitter will run out of possibility to gather that information. And yeah. so that's the reason why. And it's very important nowadays to consider, I mean, worldwide, all those, those uh, social media as a whole. In the context of what you do, are crypto markets different from all the, the other ones? Do they function differently? How so the crypto- information is treated, tr- treated, how it gets viral? So crypto market is definitely, because crypto market is yet to be regulated yeah. as opposed to the regulated the financial market, the crypto market is running 24 by 7. Yeah, and, sure. and therefore, you see the trends everywhere around the world and you need to analyze. So that's why we use artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, natural language processing to process those kind of data. And the crypto market is different in a sense from the normal traditional one because of the volume, because of the ads activities, mm-hmm. because, I mean, you can post anything in without any fear. But however, we see the two are in line with each other. Whenever the financial one is going down or so, the crypto ma- one is also having the, yeah. the science kind of same For tendency. Sure. Mm-hmm. The reason, there are two reasons. One, because you all know that, generally speaking, crypto traders they are still having some kind of like financial uh, trading background. So they are not just 100% concentrated on cryptos, but they also started with like a normal equity investment. So they are kind of following each other. Um, The only, well, one of the difference is the frequency for sure. And the other one is that uh, because it can create a lot of buzz about anything, uh, then there's much, much more noise. Because people are talking about like a new stable coin, another shit coin, yeah. uh, just to create the buzz, they will use a lot of bots, like even much more bots than in the normal financial one. Yeah. Because the normal financial ones, you still need to rely on an existing company, on an, uh, an existing corporate. Does it, say, does it say something if, uh, if a company use a lot of bots, or if uh, you see, you know, uh, the information, because Uh, in in the n- nothing is is random, you know. In the Correct. end, you have uh, you have uh, definitely a will mm-hmm. from a given company to actually promote a project. So there is lots of money involved. What does it say? You know, if you have a large budget to actually promote uh, promote something, can you actually spot, you know, what's actually created organically and non organically uh, truly? Because the value sometimes in a project is, uh, is really also in the influencer that really gets the, the, the project because they actually read, you know, subjectively, you have like some people who actually read uh, the white paper from A to Z and they can say, yes, there is an added value doing that. And this uh, opinion, when it's not viral, that's what you want to get. Mm-hmm. How do you make sure to, to spot that one, you know, and what does it say 
when there is a lot of, uh, of uh, money being spent, also to create bots. But sometimes, you know, a lot of promotional money does not mean the, the project is good. So can you give us a little, little bit of a little take on that? There's no like mathematical um, algorithm uh, or formula that will quantify the value according to the money spent, according to the number of bots, uh, according to the number of like influencers, etc. However, what is very important, and so that's why we try to make it simple mm -hmm. to use uh, for, for, for the users uh, so that they get the right information at a certain mm -hmm. point in time for them to really take a decision, mm -hmm. uh, to really, as you rightly mentioned, debunk the data. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's true that uh, if we were to analyze, let's say, a white paper, technically speaking, we could because we use technology to do that. However, you need to give indicators how authentic it is, how trusted it is. Then it will mean also some kind of white labeling. Then it will also mean some kind of like giving an opinion. Yeah. However, we try to really like remove the massive amount of noise just to leave certain identifier or certain indications that is relevant for the strategist to make a decision. Yeah, that's very important. I believe that it's really a tool it's what, really you, tool. what you created, it simple. but you still have uh, subjectivity and actually it's just to, to navigate in this uh, sea of data. Correct. It's to navigate. And so that's why what we provide, what we try to also provide is that really a dashboard that will be easy to use, easy, easy to interpret. For a human. For a human, exactly. But underlying, there's always the data. I mean, the, all the different data points that we analyze, whether it's from a text purposes, from an image perspective, the underlying data exists. So it's backed. I mean, those figures are not like being created out of the blue. Those figures are created from what we analyze from social media. And we were talking about like white paper. If suddenly there's a white paper uh, that is creating some kind of popularity about a new stable coin, well, identify that white paper, it will be saved, the link will be saved. Mm -hmm. If someone, let's say a professor is posting it, mm -hmm. maybe it didn't go, get viral because the professor is not known. Mm -hmm. However, this, this is also a starting point of a sufficient indication that this is some underlying information, mm. right? Usually, I mean, that's the reason why we also got into the NFT one is that uh, some, some people are, um, are willing to analyze some of the NFT before they get, it gets viral. Because once it gets viral, the prices will go to the, to the top. Mm. Um, and so to identify early signals in order to predict that this project is maybe going to get known and to get actually a popular, popular in addition for sure uh, of the price. So early signal, meaning that you can have the edge uh, for investors. And what's the window of, of time you know, for such an opportunity? You, you, do you have an estimation? Does it, uh, do you have a, does it create a window of opportunity of usually one day, one month? Do we have it really, it, it, it really, it really depends. depends. Yeah, we we question. track we <laughs> track information on a twenty four by seven, yeah. but it's not designated for like high frequency traders because yeah, yeah, it's not sure. to the second yeah. because it's human readable. Right, right. it's human readable. Yeah. And also the second aspect is that on social media, for a post to be relevant or for an amount of post to be sufficiently mm -hmm. relevant, if you track every second the social media, you're not going to get a post which is significant. Mm -hmm. You need a certain quantity of post on the same subject. And that's the reason why we define like 15 minutes. 15 minutes is usually just the right amount where a certain subject, let's say about bioethanol or mm -hmm. about Dogecoin or some, some others uh, that, that will have sufficient accounts. I wouldn't say people because it mm -hmm. can be bots mm -hmm. or, uh, or human that are talking about it. Because, uh, I mean, someone was asking is to reduce it to five minutes. However, we say, yeah, but five minutes is not sufficient enough to, be, to obtain the relevant information. Mm -hmm. Because using machine learning, you need also a quantity of information to derive the quality. If you have only one point, then you cannot compare one news against the other news. Uh, so in terms of timing, we stick to our 15 minutes because that's how we estimate it's relevant. But uh, I mean, uh, posts can, can, can have like an hour in advance or let's say be before a subject is becoming viral, mm -hmm. 
maybe there's one signal that is becoming viral maybe a week, two weeks, a month, two months before. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at the GameStop uh, case uh, last year, certain signal were becoming important, but limited amount of them were becoming important already months before mm -hmm. the GameStop crisis. Like a few months, I think something like four or five months, if I if I'm right. So you could so, have seen that in the feed of information. Uh, exactly that that, uh, that actually something was going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, you cannot say this will happen on that day, specific day. Yeah, sure. However, you can see the tendency, and that's how that's that's why the the hedge fund actually missed the uh, missed that opportunity because they they were not even expecting that aware to of uh, you know. But Wang, thank you a lot for helping us navigating through this uh, sea of information. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Thank you. I really appreciate it.